Dear students, a warm welcome to B2 E Sectional program. So today we are going to discuss about a module four, attractor neural network. The topic is going to be a brain state in a box. Let me see into the curriculum. So today we are going to see about the module four, attractor neural network, the continuation of the previous topic, a brain state in a box. What is this brain state in a box? In a neural network, the brain state in a box is a nonlinear auto associative neural network and can be extended to an hetero association with two or more layers. It is also similar to that of an uh, last what we have seen over there as off field network. So, actually, this uh, brain state in a box neural network. It was proposed by four scientists, Professor J. A. Anderson, Professor J. W. Silverstein, S. A. Ritz and R. S. Jones in the year 1977. Let me see inside of this topic. We will see about some of the important points which we have to remember for this brain state in a box neural network. Simply we can call this brain state in a box neural network as BSB network. The important points what actually we have to remember in this BSB neural network is it is a fully associated, it's fully connected network. So it is a fully connected network with a maximum number of nodes which is going to be depend upon a dimensionally n of input spaces. All this neural network or neurons are updated simultaneously. It's going to get updated simultaneously. And the neuron which consists of or which takes the value between minus 1 to plus 1. So these are the main three important points which we must remember before entering into the topic. As once again, I'm going to repeat the same. The important points to remember about this BSB network is it's a fully connected network, and the simultaneously these neurons are going to get updated, and the neuron which takes a value between minus one to plus one. Let's see about some more introduction about this BSB network. Brain state in a box neural network. As I said, it is an associative model uh, with it connections which is going to have a connection matrix which is going to be computed using an outer products in the usual way. So the operation of this both model is also very simple and it is going to be a similar and which is having a difference arises primarily in the way activations are going to be computed in each interactions and in the signal which is going to have a function which is going to get used over there. So this associative model which is going to be a connection matrix which is going to be get computed using an outer products in the usual way and the operations of this both model is also very similar and with the difference arises in the primary way of activation of computed in a it, each iterations and the signal functions which is going to be get used over there. So the brain state in a box stands apart from other models in its use of the linear threshold signal which is going to be used as a linear threshold signal associates associator. So which is going to be a main important thing. So the model which is going to be get uses of this linear threshold signal function and a number of interesting aspects of this model have to be analyzed. So here we will discuss about this essential of this model. So here I am going to discuss about this essentials. So the fundamental architecture and the operations of this BSP is going to be discussed over here. So this operations as I said which is going to be having a both model it's also going to be 
the way of you are going to activate and what is the function which is going to get used over there. Based on that, this is going to be get deals about that one. And the linear threshold signal function which is going to be stands for this BSP. Coming to this operational details, the fundamental architecture and operations of this BSB model is similar to that of the half field network. So neurons are going to be connected in a feedback fashion through a weight matrix W. Through a weight matrix W it is going to be get connected. So feedback fashion is going to be get connected over there. And the signal across the particular field which is going to get update simultaneously, which is going to be get update simultaneously using the same iterative process until the signal is going to get stabilized, this is going to update simultaneously. However, if you are going to see about this BSB network which is going to differ from the half field network, in a way the neurons are going to get activated which is going to be the main thing we have to understand. So, the of field network and the BSB network both are going to different or uh, which is going to get differentiate with the way of neurons activations and which are going to be get computed and the signal which is going to be get employed the signal function which is going to be get employed based on that this is going to be get varied from this half field network. So, BSB model is going to be varied from an half field network in the way of neuron activations and the signal function employed. Now we will now uh, proceed to uh, uh, formalize both this in a discrete time. So that is what we are going to do now. So we are going to take about the operational details in an activation function and the signal function. So we are going to do, discuss about two different functions, activation functions and signal function. Assume that the network has an activation vector. So, we are going to take about the vector x is equal to x of uh, 1, f, 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 x of 1, x of 2, etc. to transpose. And a corresponding signal vector also we are going to assume over there. Uh, just we can take that one a signal uh, s1, comma s2, comma s3 at a time instant k. Then the BSB neuron nothing but the BSB neuron network which is going to update these signals in accordance with the following pair of update equations. So, which is going to be written in the form of a vector form. So, as we are going to see over here, this activation function which is going to be taken in a vector form and which is going to be represented in accordance with the time with a pair of update equations as x of k plus 1 transpose is equal to gamma x s k transpose plus alpha s k transpose into the w matrix plus tau s naught transpose. So, this is going to be the activation function which is going to be get represent for this BSB network model, neural network model. This is about the operational details of this activation function. And coming to the net next one, so we must uh, note that uh, the activation compu uh, computation equation which is going to be given over there, the signal vector states by a factor gamma, it is nothing but a feedback is controlled by a scalar factor and the initial state S naught can be held present or not present by the binary control coefficient of this particular tau value. So, we have to aware about this one. Okay. So, the activation computation equation which is going to specify that the scalar, uh, the vector scale uh, by a factor which is going to be dealt as a gamma value which is going to be uh, the feedback is going to be get controlled by a scale factor alpha and the initial state S naught can be held present or not present which is going to be by a binary control coefficient with the tau function where the gamma or alpha or the tau which are the constants that control the nature of the activation update equation. 
So one might choose either gamma is equal to alpha is equal to 1 and tau may be 0. So in such case, if you assume that, I am going to choose that the gamma is equal to alpha is equal to 1 and tau function is equal to 0. If I am going to assume such a way, then the function may be, the function may be get reduced as x k plus 1 transpose is equal to s k transpose plus s k transpose into w matrix. So, this is going to be the, the final equation which is going to be get present for this activation function. And we are going to aware about the signal function as already we are aware about that this is nothing but s k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1. This is going to be the signal function. So, by substituting this values with gamma is equal to alpha is equal to 1 and tau may be taken as 0, we are going to get the final equation. We can reduce this activation function into this equation. Okay. We will move on to the signal function. In this form, the new activation vector is the sum of signal vector and the net feedback. So, therefore, the signal function S in the above equation, in the previous equation, what we have seen over this is given by a bipolar version of the linear threshold signal function. So, which is going to be taken as Si to the power k is equal to this expression, which is going to be having a condition over there when it is going to be minus 1 or it, 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 is, it may be equal to Xi of k to the power of k or plus 1. It may vary between these three values where x i of k is going to be lesser than that of minus 1 in case of s i of s i to the power of k is equal to 1. In case s i of k is equal to x i of to the power of k, then this value may vary over there. The x i to the k is equal to are greater than minus 1 and less than plus 1. In such a way, if you are going to take about the condition si to the power of k, the signal function is going to be equal to 1, then the x function is going to be get greater than that of 1. So, these are the three parameters, these are the three value we are going to assume over here. So, if you are going to see about this, the BSB uh, piecewise portraits the piecewise linear signal function. So, this linear nature of the signal function. So, the linear threshold signal function which clips the signal as they exceeds the lower and upper limits, it may be taken off minus 1 plus or minus 1 value. And thus it constrains, the constraints of this BSB, the state vector is going to remain within the bipolar n dimensional units hypercube. So, centered at the origin, if you are going to see about that, this is nothing but the hypercube which is going to be get represented over here. So, this value we can see that one which is going to fall in between this minus 1 as well as this plus 1. So, this hypercube is going to be created at center of this origin. So, as the network releases or which is going to be get relaxed from the positive feedback which causes the edelian length of the signal vector sk which is going to increase until it hits the wall of the box after which it slides along the wall till it's it's a another corner so it's going to be get growing over there and it's going to hit the function and again it's going to hit to the next function or next wall so such a way it's going to create the values over here. So, it is going to make, make a hypercube over here. So, this is what the signal function which is going to be mentioned over there with the linear threshold of the signal function. So, as we are aware about this, the network which is going to be get relaxes the positive feedback which causes this edelian length of the signal vector sk which is going to increase until it hits the network wall of this particular box 
after which it slides along with the wall and it's the another corner such a way it's going to make the hyper cube moving on to the next topic the weight matrix as in the case of a uh, hop field network the connection matrix is symmetric which implies the existence of n mutually orthogonal egn vectors as 1 comma 2 comma 3 up to the egn value n tak then the matrix w is going to be completely determined by its egn values and the egn vectors so if you start out with a zero connection matrix and assume that the q orthogonal or orthonormal input vectors a suffix i are presented such that the each ai appears at the time of lambda i so that then the in accordance with the hips encoding technique or scheme the resulting connection matrix w may be represented as w is equal to summation of k is equal to 1 to k with lambda suffix k then the value of ak and ak transpose so as we already aware about that this is nothing but the value which is going to be determined over the the egn values and we are going to take about the orthonormal value okay the ai is nothing but ortho value orthonormal input vectors so this is going to be get made as w is equal to summation of k is equal to 1 to q lambda k ak and ak transpose so note that each a value is an egn value of an vector matrix with an egn vector egn vector of this lambda value since the value it's going to be get arranged so that the the orthonormal value is going to be an egn vector of this matrix w with the egn value lambda i so that the w matrix with its orthonormal value becomes the value of this summation of this one is going to be into it so that finally we are going to get this is going to be the egn values into egn vectors so these are the function which is going to be given over there as w matrix into orthonormal values equal to the product of egn vector and egn values assume that if q is going to be uh, lesser than that of the n dimensionality then remaining n is going to be subtracted from the q egn vectors of this w matrix so that the w matrix the weight matrix have zero egn values so this formulation allows us to interpret the egn values of weight matrix with more commonly presented pattern and a larger egn values such a way we are going to do this one so that i am going to take this value i is equal to either 1 2 3 up to the q value uh note we have to aware something over here that here the egn value can be looked up as a measure of the frequency of presentation so this bsb neural network a learning law is such that it attempts to make the pattern in a data set corresponds to egn vectors of the weight matrix so in such that we are going to study about the operational summary of this particular bsb model so if you can see about this operational function as mentioned earlier the update algorithm of this bsb model a neural network model is similar to that of an off field network and have a slight difference over there and it is presented in this table like this which have been presented in this table as we are you are seeing in this slide the signals are first initiated to zero actually we are going to initiate the signals with zero then the network relaxes or relaxes uh, by using the 
update equation activation function and the signal function alternatively that is going to do the function over here. Okay. So that the network relaxation continues until the state vector gets boxed into one of the corner of the n dimensional hypercubes. As already we are aware about that, one second I am going to give a glimpse about that one. If the value which is going to be get present, it is going to hit the value, it is going to hit the value of this wall. Once it is going to be hit, then it has to turns and it is going to touch for the another wall. And like such a way, it is going to make the box. So, hypercube is going to be created like this. So, until this, okay. So, the network which is going to relax this continues until the state vector gets a box into one of the corner of this n dimensional hypercube. Okay. So, if you are going to see about this, uh, coming to this table, the given value a set of binary vectors to be encoded into a BSB network using a binary encoding. We are going to fix a set of binary vectors as already we discussed about the agent values. AI is going to be taken from i is equal to 1 to q. We are going to get count over there to be encoded into the BSB network which is going to be using a binary encoding function. And the encoding function which is going to be already we have come across with the encoding function which is going to deal about that the weight matrix w is equal to summation of summation of k is equal to 1 to q we are going to already we have found a value over here there is nothing but the lambda into a k into a k transpose. So, this is nothing but the weight matrix is equal to the EGN values and the EGN vectors and EGN vectors transfers. So, the product of this three makes the weight matrix which is going to be using for this encoding function and we have to initialize. So, after we are going to assign this vector values and we have calculated the encoded format, we have to initialize. So, we have to set up the neuron signal vector to the probe vector S0. Okay, so, as already we assumed the three values as the gamma value, the alpha value and the dou value. We have taken that one, isn't it? So, in such a way, we have to set this value. How we are going to set the value? Just we are going to take that gamma is equal to alpha is equal to 1 and the dou value is equal to 0. We have taken, we have already assumed this value is over there. So, with the help of this value, we are going to set the value over. This is called as initialization. So, once we are going to set the binary vectors, then we are going to take the uh, encoding format of this weight matrix, then we are going to initialize the values of this neuron signal vectors to the probe vector S0. And we are going to set the value of gamma, alpha and dou. Now, we are going to start the iteration. So, iteration is going to compare the neuron activations, it is going to check for the uh, neuron activations and simultaneously it has to be get updated. So, it has to get update the neurons simultaneously. So, update the neuron simultaneously with the signal function s k plus 1 is equal to the value which have been mentioned over there, is not it? So, x k plus 1, where already we have understood about the value that the x i value may be lesser than 1 or minus 1 or greater than 1 or it may fall in between minus 1 to plus 1 also. It may be equal to minus 1 or less than sorry greater than minus 1 as well as it may be less than plus 1 or equal to plus 1. So, such a value it is going to be get. So, by detecting this value it is going to update the neurons simultaneously. So, the neurons are going to be updated simultaneously. Okay. Such a way it is going to do its operational model of this BSB model. Move on to the next one. The BSB has to Cohen Crossberg form. How we are going to make it as to has a Cohen Crossberg form? The brain state in a box model minimizes an 
Lyapunov energy function and thus the network possesses a stable dynamics. As already we have discussed about this one in the previous video about the Lyapunov energy function. So, this model which is going to minimize the energy function of this Lyapunov energy function and thus it is going to make or possesses a stable dynamics. So, this uh, model is a special case of uh, cohen crossberg dynamics. So, as all we need to do is to recast it in a additive form uh, because we already known that that additive dynamics is a special case of cohen crossberg dynamics. Hence, we need to recast it in a additive form. So, we are going to minimize a Lyapunov energy function and we are going to possess the stable dynamics for this network and we are going to recast this into an additive form. Such a way we can make this BSS2 has a cohen crossberg form. Let me discuss about the next one. Rework a signal update equation. How we can rework the signal update equation? For that we have to uh, let me consider a neuron specific scalar form of this brain state in a box vector update equation with a value of gamma is equal to 1 and tau is equal to 0. I am not going to consider alpha value over here. Just I am going to take that gamma value is equal to 1 as already what we discussed in the previous slide the same thing we are going to do that one. So, we are going to assume the value of gamma is equal to 1 and tau is equal to 0. By considering that I am going to get a neuron specific scalar from this brain state in a box vector update with the equation of these two values gamma is equal to 1 and tau is equal to 0. So, that what happened the signal function which is going to be taken into a next level that is going to be get dealt as as i to the power of k plus 1 is equal to the summation of this equation is going to be get arise over there. So, from this we are going to simplify the value and we are going to take this tau j i is going to be the Kornecker delta function. Okay. The, the Kornecker delta function we are going to make this tau suffix j i value then we can define this b j i is going to be a delta j i plus alpha into w j i. So, this is going to be called as Kornecker delta function. The b suffix j i is going to be the Kornecker delta function. We are going to get this value from this. So, the b s b is going to be a specific a special case of a particular Cohen Crossberg dynamics. So, uh, I request you people to refer the text also to identify about this particular expression in detail. Okay. Coming to the next one, the Crossberg, how the sum exchanges, in what way? So, notice that the signal weight matrix is going to be symmetric as I am going to take about this value of b of i j is equal to b of j i. So, I am going to assume that both are going to be symmetric. Okay. So, that what happened notice if you if we have to notice this weight matrix is going to be symmetric. So, although the equation which is going to be specified in the discrete time one can easily rewrite in a continuous form also. We can rewrite these expressions in a continuous form also. Okay. So, as we are going to see about that this is going to be a continuous form of this signal we have which have been written in the discrete as we have come across in the previous slide this expression is going to be written into the continuous form as like this. Okay. Now, we are going to consider a change of variable by making a small slight changes in the variable and we are going to make the substitutions. So, which is going to make a transformation of this variable makes this expression to be a simpler of this one y i is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n the Carnac function into the signal function. 
and we are going to rewrite, we may rewrite this expression into a transformed space with the additive dynamics as already we discussed about that rep representation of this expression if it's going to be there because we have to recall and recast that additive dynamics value so that I am going to change this, rewrite this expression in the transformed space of the additive dynamics. So this additive dynamics in a continuous form which is going to be get changes this value into this. Okay. So if you are going to make this additive dynamics this continuous from the discrete to continuous to the additive value we are going to additive dynamics we are going to make this expression. So this is going to be the sum exchange of this Cohen Burr equation. Move on to the next one the signal which is going to be present in the Lyapunova function. Let me see about this one. So as we come across about the previous function the previous equation is going to be actually an additive neurodynamical system but with the external input if you are going to take that Li is equal to so Li is equal to 0 if I am going to assume that one then the Lyapunova function for this uh, BSB neural network model is now a straight forward to this expression which is going to be dealt as a straight forward expression can be derived over here. So all we need to do is to make the appropriate substitutions into the Lyapunova function of the standard Cohen Crossberg form. Hence this expression may yield the Lyapunova function as E is equal to because Lyapunova energy function e is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to n integral of 0 to yi which is going to make this expression all this data terminals are going to get present to you. If you are going to take about this one which is going to give the signal function as well as the Carnac delta function together it is going to get present over there. So using this definition uh, from the above equation what we have written over here uh, can be rewritten in terms of original values of the signal function as SI. So uh, this terminology are going to be get replaced with the signal functions and we are going to replace this information into a signal function hence we can take that the Lyapunova energy function E is equal to minus alpha by 2 summation of j is equal to 1 to n k is equal to 1 to n and the weight matrix we are going to consider over there with this signal functions. Hence the finally the energy expression for this Lyapunova energy function which is going to deal as E is equal to minus alpha by 2 signal S transpose W into signal function. So this is going to be the final expression which is going to be sum exchange for the signal sum exchange for this Lyapunova function. It is interesting to note that the equation can be derived independently or a direct analysis of this BSB neural network model. It was also shown that the weight matrix uh, WJ is a symmetric and a positive semi-defined with EGN values of uh, lambda i. Okay, na? So which is always going to be greater than or equal to 0 value. So then the BSB model, the neural network BSB model performs a gradient descent for this Lyapunova energy function. So in other words we can say that the energy decreases with the iteration and a minimum points of this energy surface mark the equilibrium state of the network. As we can observe about this one in this, as we say, I say that it can decrease the iterations, each iteration can be decreased over there with a minimum points of this particular energy surface. So which is going to make this as network to be a equilibrium state. So it is going to bring this uh, BSB network model into an equilibrium state. Uh, let me discuss about the next topic which is going to be called as uh, a MATLAB simulation of this BSB dynamics.
what is MATLAB simulation? So we familiarize ourselves with the dynamics of this BSB model, the BSB neural network model with the help of a simulation. Okay, we can understand in a clear cut way about this one. So this uh, brain state in a box dynamics are simulated in two dimensions for easy visualization. We can easily visualize that. Okay, So two uh, dimensions for easy visualization, we can do that. So consider uh, an uh, encoding this vectors as already we are aware about that we are going to take a vector value as a1 as well as a2. a1 is going to be taken as 1 comma minus 1 and a2 is going to be taken as 1 comma 1. As I said we are going to make the simulation into two dimensionals for the uh, visualization easy easy visualization. So the BSB dynamics are going to be identified with two dy dimensionals. So a1 is equal to plus 1 comma minus 1 and a2 is equal to a2 is equal to 1 comma 1 that is going to be taken over here. Okay. So considering this which is going to be taken into a transverse value also over there we can take a1 is equal to 1 comma 1 transfer and a2 is equal to 1 comma 1 transfer which is we, we can assume such a value over here and this EGN value which is going to be get assumed for each of this vectors or we can take it as a lambda 1 value and lambda 2 value we are going to assume that lambda 1 value is equal to 0 0.04 and lambda 2 value is going to be assumed as 0 0.03 okay. So noting that the magnitude of this each of this vectors is going to be root 2. So the resultant uh, matrix we are going to identify from this. Okay. So we are going to identify the resultant matrix as W, the weight matrix W is equal to 1 over root 2 lambda 1 into A1, A1 transpose plus lambda 2 A2 into A2 transverse and which is going to give a value for that okay so because already we have substituted the values over here as a1 is going to consist of two values 1 plus 1 and minus 1 a2 plus 1 comma plus 1 and egn vectors lambda 1 consisting of 0 0.04 lambda 2 consisting of 0 0.03 and apart from that we are going to consider we are going to choose the value as already we have chosen like gamma is equal to alpha, alpha is equal to 1. So gamma alpha is equal to 1 and dou l is equal to 0. By substituting this values over here we can get this weight matrix is equal to 0 0.035 a two dimensional weight matrix we are going to gather over here. So 0 0.035 minus 0 0.005 minus 0 0.005 and 0 0.035. So this is the weight matrix which are going to be get gathered for by this substitution of these values into this particular weight matrix W. Okay. Such a way we are going to get this one. This is a simulation data what we are going to consider over here as already we have said that one by considering the vector values of A1 and A2 into the BSB neural network and the EGN value assumed as the lambda 1 lambda 2 value along with this constants we are going to get the W matrix the weight matrix is as like that of 0 0.035 minus 0 0.005 and minus 0 0.005 and 0 0.035. Let me go for the network trajectories how this trajectories are going to be get present the figure shows the starting out from equally spaced point in the plane. In the simulation we can assume as we are assumed that the value of gamma is equal to alpha is equal to 0 and the del value is equal to sorry this is equal to 1 and del value is equal to 0. This simulation which the boundaries of this four basins of attractions are very clear in this figure. We can see these attractions. Okay, This is an uh, 
BSB network trajectory starting out from the equally spaced points in the unit bipolar square. So here the, the trajectories which are going to be moved from point in the plane to the corners which is going to move from the point to the corner which is going to be get moving like this. It is going to be get moving from the center to the corners. Note that the four corners present a stable attractor of the system. So, all the four corners are going to be stable attractors. If you can see this difference, you can identify this. So, the last four corners which are going to be get present represents a stable attractor of the system. Here, if you are going to see about this, two of the corners we are going to take here, okay. One is nothing but 1 comma minus 1 and plus 1 comma plus 1. As already we have discussed about the value, we have assumed A1 comma A2. A1 is nothing but 1 comma minus 1. A2 is nothing but 1 comma 1, which are going to be called as an en uh, encoded points, okay. So, other two are going to be unindented or uh, what I can say, we are not going to consider about other two values over there. So, 1 comma 1 and minus 1 plus 1 comma minus 1, these two values we are going to consider over there. So, the most trajectories moves outwards towards one of the edge of the square. Expect for the uh, ones that not move diagonally, okay. So, which is going to indicate that one of the neuron as saturated, from there they slide towards the corner. Once the neurons are going to get saturated, then they are, trying, they are trying to move towards the corner. Finally, at the corner of the square, both neurons are saturated. So, at the corners of the square, both the neurons are going to get saturated. Understand? So, if you are going to see about the top left of this particular end and the lower right basins of this particular end. These are called as an right basins of attractions which are going to be associated with the large EGN values. So, the large EGN values we can identify from this top left corner and the bottom or lower right corner. So, the corners of the squares which are going to be get both the neurons are going to be get saturated. So, these are going to be associated with the large EGN values, the top right and the lower left basins are associated with the smaller EGN value. The origin of this, it may be an unstable fixed point, okay, or we can say that unstable fixed point, any shift which is going to be away, which is going to be caused by the trajectory of this end up at one of the corners which are going to be stable, a fixed point attractors. It has to be observed from this particular picture. Such a way we are going to study about the network trajectories by making this simulated simulation process. Move on to the next one, we are going to see about this uh, simulation. To do the simulation, we are going to write a MATLAB code. As you are, you are going to follow this MATLAB code which have been given over there, we are going to assume the value as delta is equal to 0, gamma is equal to 1, alpha is equal to 1 as already we have uh, initialized over there as gamma value is equal to alpha value is equal to 1 and tau del value is equal to 0. So, the same thing I am going to initialize over it. del is equal to 0, gamma is equal to 1, alpha is equal to 0 and we are going to give the upper limit and lower limit. So, limits are going to be identified as minus 1 to plus 1 and two different values we have assumed over there as lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, lambda 1 value 0 0.04 and lambda 2 value 0 0.03 which have been highlighted over there. Then we are going to take the value as a1, a2 has been initialized as 
the specific vectors we have to encode it as I have taken here as x1 and x2 which is going to be 1 comma minus 1 and 1 comma plus 1 okay plus 1 comma minus 1 as a1 value plus 1 comma plus 1 as a2 value then I am going to make the normalize we have to normalize them isn't it so that I am going to take this x1 x2 value to the square root of that one so x1 by square root of 2 and x2 by square root of 2 this values have been taken over there normalizing them and we are going to do the encoding of this particular process. So the W value which is going to be taken the weight matrix W is going to be dealt as lambda value lambda 1 into A1 into lambda 2 into A2 into transverse of AT. So as already we are aware about that weight matrix is equal to lambda 1 A1 A1 transverse plus lambda 2 a2 and a2 transverse. So this is nothing but the weight matrix value which have been taken over. So that has to be entered into the matrix code as I have mentioned over there into the formula as weight matrix is equal to lambda 1 into x1 value and x1 transverse and lambda 2 into x2 value into x2 transverse and we are going to identify the data from this I am going to take the uh, initial point we have to as we are going to take the simulation point as in the previous slide we have come across over there as minus 1 minus 1 value and plus 1 plus 1 value we are going to take that one such values has to be identified over there here I am going to take this value as this minus 1 minus 1 and plus 1 plus 1 value just I am going to initialize that one then we are going to take the actual values which is going to be acting over there and finally we are going to producing the end result as like this. So such a way we are going to get this one. So uh, as we are aware about this the figure which have been generated with the MATLAB code as you have seen about this, this is a figure which have been generated from the MATLAB code for this uh, given program. So after the appropriate initialization after the appropriate initialization of this variables for the activation update and the signal function which consisting of a delta value, gamma value and the alpha value with the lambda value 1 and lambda value 2 along with the limitation what we have given over the limits of plus 1 to minus 1. The weight matrix W is going to be get generated as we are aware about that this is going to be generated using a normalized vector and frequency encoding based on the EGN value which have been assumed as lambda 1 and lambda 2. So that the W is equal to lambda 1 A1 A transverse plus W2 into A2 into A2 transverse that is going to be taken into the consideration of this weight matrix. So in the simulation the initial points are defined on the grid of this particular Resolution. If you are going to see about this, it is going to be a, a simulation is going to be get provided with the grid. Okay, So as we are aware about the grids have been given over there as the resolution is going to be identified as point 1 using this variable inclinations. So in the bipolar unit space which has going to be created over there. So the coordinates of this points are x and y. Such a way we have been taken into this consideration and we have simulated this course over there. So within the loop, within the loop if you are going to see about that, the signal vector S is going to be get initialized, the S is going to be get initialized, within the loop the S value is going to be get initialized, after uh, the S value is going to be initialized over there after which the network is going to be relaxes for 150 iterations, we are going to take into 150 iterations. So the while loop has been produced over there, the while loop has been introduced and the S value, the signal function is going to be get initialized over there. Okay. And this we have taken into a consideration of the iteration value of S is going to be taken into 150 iterations is going to be taken over there. So activation are going to be get stored in the variable act. Okay. So that the signal strategies, sorry that uh, 
the signal value which are going to be stored in the vector s and which are going to be used for plotting the particular diagram or something but the simulation plot which is going to be shown as like this. We will continue the remaining topics in the next video. Thank you.